I came back to, you know, a disaster. My, half, my house was, uh, the roofs were gone in some of the rooms. The water everywhere. Done a great job. They're doing a lot of work inside. We painted some of my roofs, tiled some of my floors. So, they, you know, it's beginning to be look, look beautiful in there. I'm here with the Episcopal Diocese of Texas, which comprises the greater Houston area and surrounding Texas area. We're up here on a trip called Mission Palooza, where we do mission work for uh, areas that have been hit, especially with Wimberley with the flooding. We were going to demolish a person's old home. They've moved a new home in. In the meantime, we're also doing some projects for the resident that needed, you know, some other things built and inside work done on the new home. I think it's really important to give the kids an opportunity to take ownership of projects, complete things, be able to stand back and look and see the physical thing. I did this and it helped somebody. I feel great. I I love how so many people just want to come out here and work, just to help those who are less fortunate. It makes me feel like I'm doing what I was supposed to do. It's just really rewarding. It, uh, it's it's undescribable. It feels like I know them because like we're all God's creation, and I just really feel bad that that has to happen to them. Come together right now. Hello, everybody. You're listening to KTSW 89.9. I'm Dirty Jules. And I'm Dylan. And sad news. Yeah, we got to talk about this real quick. We had a beloved creative icon die today, and we had to touch on it, of yeah. course. His name is Prince. Sometimes he was the artist formerly known as Prince. Yep, she's speaking facts right now. Because his lawyer and stuff like that. But his real name is actually Prince. Yeah, his, it's like Prince Rogers Nelson. I think it is, yeah. Yeah. That's correct. He was only 57 years old, and my parents are like 56, 58, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I'm just like, wow. Yeah. It's not a lot of life. I mean, with all this weather we've been having, can we just, now can we have purple rain instead of just normal rain? I think Jesus should take the wheel and put a little dye in there. Yeah. <laughs> he can do it. He can. Yeah. It'll be pretty, too. If we'll all be dies. like, this is Prince blessing us one last time. And if it dyes my hair purple, who, so who be cares? It. Who, yeah. uh, what? I don't need a real job. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, but we'll get back to what you just heard. You yes. heard Reclaimed World by Running, and that was from their album Wake Up Applauding. Mm -hmm. And then you also heard Window of My World by Guided by Voices. That's so deep. So deep. Just like, I really can't compare it to that. That was too much, but yeah. <laughs> You're not on that level. Yeah. Time for your KTSW weather report. What's it feel like, Dylan? It feels pretty good outside for once. Like, I'm in shorts and I don't regret it this time. Nice, no regrets. But it is 69 degrees right now. It's supposed to get down to 61. And then tomorrow, your Friday, is going to be 82 and fully sunny. No more rain for, like, I don't know, two days. I hope. Yeah. But yes, it feels good right now. You're walking home from the square, or you're just going to the square. That's it probably, feels good. Yeah, yeah, it's probably the last one. That's where my friends are. Oh. It's okay. I'll be there soon. Yeah. Maybe. Jules I don't know. Or Dirty Jules' friends are coming. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. But yes, it is going to be sunny and then cold at night. Mm -hmm. And the next song you're about to hear is by Night Moves. No, Night Beats is at Mr. Fest, not Night Moves, but... <laughs> Yeah, Night Moves is coming on next here on KTSW 89.9. Two people from Lockhart were killed in a crash Tuesday when the bus they were riding in was struck by a train in Mississippi. Former Lockhart School Administrators Ken and Peggy Hoffman were traveling with the Bastrop Senior Center and were killed at the scene along with two other people. The wreck injured 35 others. At a briefing this afternoon, federal investigators said the train was traveling about 26 miles per hour when it crashed into the bus. The cause of the accident is still under investigation. San Marcos has named a new acting city manager for the second time this year. The city council assigned Steve Parker to the position last night. 
Former city manager Jared Miller left San Marcos to be the acting manager at Amarillo earlier this year, and his replacement, Colette Jamison, decided to step down last week. KXAN reports that Mayor John Tamaiti says that dealing with the open position has been a challenge, but they, the city will continue searching for a permanent replacement. The exhibit called Memories from My Duffel Bag has items dating back to World War II. War medals and uniforms are among the memorabilia at the exhibit, which was put together by Dana Holmes. Holmes wanted students to become more aware of student veterans at Texas State. For some veterans, the exhibit reminds them of their time in the military. I was in before Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So I think that was the most difficult because, you know, not only did I have to do my job, but I kind of had to, like, like, not speak about my sexual identity. I was. The transition from service to the classroom can have an effect on some Bobcat veterans. I wasn't here a whole year ago. I've, I was on the completely other side of the world watching completely different things take place. It was, it was more of just like a, for me, just kind of like a, whoa, like reality setting in kind of thing. Like I'm back in the United States and I'm going to school. Organizers of the exhibit say they want to honor veterans and show appreciation for their service. I was just blown away by how just how efficient and how professional like their veteran, veteran services were in general. And I was, it was just, they are very on top of things, they knew. And I feel like they, they definitely listen to their veterans. They have, a whole, they have a whole display case. Most of the war memorabilia that the exhibit holds is from Texas State students who have served and donated their items to be on display. The exhibit will be on the first floor of the Elkeck Library until March 26. For Bobcat Update, I'm Dylan Anguiano. The Bobcat Guardian app is designed to ensure safety, a goal that many students can appreciate. Uh, I really like that I can list my friends and my roommates as guardians, so if I don't reply, they can either track me or alert someone that I'm missing. By merely pushing a button, students can dial university police in emergency situations, or they can assign guardians to monitor them remotely. Also, a timer can be set to show when the users are supposed to arrive at their destinations. It's nice to know that UPD can find me if they need to, and my guardian can know where I am at all times. Assigned guardians can be friends or family members. Using the app offers some security and peace of mind. Um, it's actually kind of nice because I can get my roommate to give me her location, and I can give her mine, and she can like make sure I'm getting to the bus fine, or um, I, my mom even has it too. If you want to download the app to be safer on campus, you can download it through the App Store or Google Play for Android. For Bobcat Update, I'm Dylan Anguiano. Throughout the semester, students write research papers and essays for their classes. Making sure essays are organized and have all the correct punctuation and grammar can be a daunting task for some students. The Writing Center helps students become better writers. We have the PUG is one of our big ones for students getting ready to take the PUG exam or who just need more assistance with their punctuation, usage, and grammar. Um, we also have the Creative Writing Workshop for students who want to learn more about creative writing. We offer style guide workshops like MLA, APA, in Chicago, and we offer some shop talks through the Graduate College as well. Write Time is a workshop held Mondays from noon to 2.30 in the afternoons and on Thursdays from 2 to 4.30. It is designed for students to practice their writing. Students can meet with a tutor for a one-on-one -on -one session and receive feedback. I like to come to writing time because lots of times I just like don't know how to organize my thoughts when I'm like writing. It doesn't like come easy so I just come here and I like show them what I have and then they kind of help me figure out what to do and like since finals are coming up like it just makes it way easier. It's more organized and like everybody's here to work on writing so it works. In addition to write time, the Writing Center offers a variety of other workshops. Some of the workshops include creative writing and pug review. The Writing Center is located on the ground floor of the Academic Service Building north across from the den. We set a writing schedule for the week, look at trying to set aside 15 minutes a day for writing because research shows that you get more accomplished that way than trying to set aside a whole day. So we try to break down the process and make it a lot more manageable. With finals right around the corner, don't wait until the last minute to come to the Writing Center. Go to the Writing Center's website for more information. For Bobcat Update, I'm Dylan Anguiano.